What up, Reject Nation? We got ourselves some new rock stars. The Thor Love and Thunder trailer Easter egg breakdown. Let's hop into this. Leave a like. Check out our Thor Love and Thunder trailer reaction. And also, check out Koi Jandro's first episode of uh, Koi's Comic Corner. Appreciate all the love he's been getting. Let's get into it. Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the latest trailer for Thor Love and Thunder, which finally reveals the face of the villain, Gore the God Butcher. Yeah! And flick me, he looks sick. It is time for a- I will flick you. All the details you missed, and not just because this is the second Marvel trailer in one week to lead with ass, though we actually did go frame by frame through that ass shot because there are some interesting details there. Not the details you think, well the details you think, but also more details than you think. I want the details that I'm thinking of. Okay, we open with this same shot of Thor or meditating beneath this wisdom tree that we saw in the last trailer, but a key difference, they have now added two figures hiking up to Thor from behind. Ah, so good Lynn catch. Hmm. Perhaps Peter Quill does look like Pratt silhouette there. And then I would say either Nebula or Mantis, but this woman doesn't exactly match their silhouettes. The so maybe Valkyrie, maybe Jane, maybe Gamora. Will this movie finally mm -hmm. reunite variant Gamora with the rest of the Guardians? We can actually see that same tree <laughs> behind Korg as he's regaling the kids. Maybe telling the kids, hey, don't bother Uncle Thor right now. He's getting some alone time. Now, this blue-skinned race is actually the same tribe that the Guardians fight alongside in the other shots. I'm thinking they're the Zatoan tribe of the planet Centauri IV, the same tribe as Yondu, which is why the Guardians feel such a kinship with this tribe, wanting to defend Yondu's home planet. So if this planet is Yondu's home world of Centauri IV, that would make these other planets and stars in the sky part of the Alpha Centauri system, Alpha Centauri being the largest sun in the sky. And it's interesting that we can see so many yeah, of the other yes. planets in the horizon, because it could be how this movie visually conveys my theory that Centauri's neighboring planet of Centauri 6, referenced in Eternals as a past planet that the Eternals helped destroy to birth the Celestial, could get referenced in this movie. We might even see the ruins of that planet in the sky, and that could be the home world of Gore, the reason why he hates all gods now. Yeah, that would be fascinating if that is true, that these are the Yondu's race, and then so you're picking up from where we left off with uh, the Guardians, at least in terms of volume two. It does make me hope that with the Guardians being here because I know with like Infinity War at least I believe James Gunn was consulted on the writing for them. I am hoping that you know Taika Waititi Oscar winning writer let's not get ahead of ourselves. He still might need some of that James Gunn voice in those characters so I'm <laughs> hoping that James Gunn was still involved in some way. It's a dream collab right there. Or yeah. to Battle of the Egos. Oh uh, <laughs> the big studio system never. We see Thor powering up Stormbreaker. We actually see him coming down on whoever these raiders are in the final shot at the trailer. Then Thor pops the collar of his leather vest on the Benatar while the other Guardians turn to look. It actually looks like he may have borrowed some of these clothes from Peter Quill. Like this looks like it used to be Quill's red jacket, but now with the sleeves removed because I, yeah, there's no way those tree trunks are gonna fit in sleeves. You're saying he might have removed the arms and then added the diamond arrow pointing up <laughs> on the back. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Thor's getting into customization and sewing and studying and all sorts of things. Man, that's how you retreat. That's how you treat yourself. Actually, the shirt he's wearing looks like an artistic display of the nine realms spread out across the Yggdrasil, which of course is the Asgardian world's tree. And this whole tank and jeans look looks a lot like Kurt Russell's look in Big Trouble in Little China. Kurt Russell, of course, playing Peter Quill's father of the ego. Some new shots of New Asgard and Tonsberg, Norway, and its state as a tourist attraction now. In addition to the cruise liners, one of them having the face of Volstagg, members of the Warriors 3 who died in Ragnarok, we can also see a golf course. Now, I'm not sure if these greens are on the same field where hella broke Mjolnir and where Odin died? If so, it's kind of sad for tourism to carpet over that site. But actually in the middle of that green is some figure that might be just a golfer with his caddy or might be that pedestal that contains the broken shards of Mjolnir, those shards unable to be lifted and moved. And maybe ha. now that's Thor just sitting on it. A monument. Oh, that would make it so much more rewarding if they set it up that way. I didn't even think about that. The broken pieces of Mjolnir, you can't even move that. I thought it'd have to be like a complete hammer. That's how I always viewed it if it's in movie but it, that would be uh, kind of poetic in some way. Yeah, and then it would lead to a big surprise moment when it shows back up all kitsune you know? Yeah, big surprise that was revealed in the trailer. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> Remove that bit of catharsis from the actual movie experience. <laughs> if they're sitting on that pile of Milner, that's gonna really hurt his ass. That fine ass. Then Thor uses Stormbreaker to change into his Asgardian leathers. So if those were Peter Quill's clothes, I guess they're gone now. We can see Korg reigning Thor's goats. Let's give this a shot. Tongri and Tongyost. I don't know, but they translate to teeth bearers slash teeth snarler and then teeth grinder. These goats are famously Thor's steeds from Norse mythology. But like in the shot of this from the first trailer, this one also is just framed in a weird way to make me think that there is a third character who has been digitally removed from the trailer footage. Now, so I true. It could be yeah. Beta Ray Bill, one of the versions of Thor yes. in the comics. And he's got to make it into live action MCU at some point. So I'm praying that's the case. But behind them now in this shot, you can see more of those blue skinned Centurions. So this still would be that same planet. And if that wide shot was showing Gamora, she would be another surprise character that they might want to leave out of the trailer. Beta Ray Bill, Gamora, sure. someone else. Let me know who you think is actually here in the comments below. All right, you know, I just I feel like if you're gonna have Gamora, that, that should be reserved for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. That's like such a Guardian specific story, you know? Yeah, and, and the catharsis would serve them. Yeah, a thousand percent. We're on the same page here. Where's the day? Rarely do we ever agree. <laughs> then more shots of Thor's Mr. Incredible style workout routine, battle ropes with these chains on a giant skeleton. I'm still wondering if it could be one of the past gods that Gore has captured and tortured. Thor, once again, wears the trucker hat that previously had Mightiest Avengers on it. And then now he's sharpied over it so that instead of Mightiest, it's Strongest. And then Avengers is now just Avenger. He crossed out the X. I like that hat. Thor being the strongest Avenger, a recurring joke that's been in all these movies. Me Meanwhile, too. his whole look is modeled on Vincent. D'Onofrio's character in Adventures of Babysitting when that girl thought he was Thor. But another one of his fitness goals was to tow the entire <laughs> Benatar. The fact that he's able to take any steps at all is pretty impressive. I feel like this session is going to end with Quill just flooring it and yanking Thor off planet so that they could suddenly hit the brakes and then he like smacks up against the back window this time. Uh, Alright, on to the next clip. And after all that he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? Uh, That's gotta be a different so Thor, Thor, man. Here is fighting off these dark monsters who are attacking yeah, the town of New Asgard. Like these may be the Black Berserkers, who are Gore's minions from the comics, whom he summons with his sword, mm, really yes, extensions yes. of himself. Since All Black was the weapon of the symbiote yeah. deity of Null in the comics, the Black Berserkers are in a way kindred of the symbiotes, which yes, remain Sony properties, but Marvel doesn't have to explicitly go into the sword symbiote mm. backstory mm. in this movie. It is nice to see all the other townspeople actively fighting off the Berserkers as well. It's not just the Asgard protectors of the Iron Einherjar, Ein Einherjar, 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 I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, we are seeing plain clothes civilians picking up pipes and stuff and beating them down. Now Thor tries to summon Mjolnir, but it hovers inches from his fingers and Luke lightsabers from Kylo De Rey. Jane Foster is the mighty Thor from Jason Aaron's comic run, in which Jane uses Mjolnir to power up into Thor to escape her cancer treatments. This trailer may later hint at why Jane is carrying Mjolnir. I'll get to that in a bit. Right here, there is some odd editing going on because in the reaction shot, Thor is suddenly yeah. now suited up in his brighter golden armor and his helmet, as opposed to his leather armor that he was wearing before. So really, we're seeing two moments stitched together. Maybe one earlier in the battle, and then one at the end of the battle where the two finally step up to each other. His so armor's all there different. There is something goofy about the framing here. Like, Thor yeah. is yeah. Yeah. This looks well, on the green the screen. Shot, as if yeah. they may be masking something here. Like, I'm just going to be surprised if this is exactly how it looks in the theatrical version of the movie. So why the armor upgrade? Why are all the characters wearing armor upgrades? I think it may be Jane as the mighty Thor wielding Mjolnir that causes all the Asgardians to suit up in this new badass look. Like Jane signals a new changing of the guard. I guess the part that's weird to me about it, if it is just two different moments stitched together, both shots seem like they're the first time he's seeing Jane as mighty Thor. So that's why I think some people have been thinking that maybe this, there's two Thors there. Multiversal variants crossover because Mjolnir is coming to him. He's like, Mjolnir. And then he watches it get retracted back to her. That lines up and then it cuts to the other shot where he's going, Jane? Like, shocked to see her yeah i don't know why why else you would be doing that again he's got a short-term memory thing in this movie <laughs> yeah. whole plot line <laughs> they're not revealing yet so jane is riding a pegasus the same kind of steed valkyrie rode in endgame she's riding into this weird chamber see two shots of it here but there's a wider shot later in the trailer that gives us a big shot oh of shit with these Whoa, statues that yes to you. these are all that's the living tribunal entities. the clearest one to the far right is the living tribunal the living tribunal yeah showing up 
up. It's the three-headed and, chief and one of them looked like the, the it's watch representing equity, necessity, and revenge. They just made a cameo in Multiverse of Madness, the first alternate dimension that America <laughs> Chavez and Strange tumbled through. But in that case, all three faces were separated from each other. Maybe a way of showing that we were on a different dimensional plane there. And of course, all another one of these Living Tribunal statues showed up severed in the void in Loki. Oh, At right. the time, I speculated, could that have been a reality where the Living Tribunal was overthrown, maybe by someone like Gore the God Butcher? The fact that the Living uh, Tribunal uh, <laughs> 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 <It's laughs> Yes, that's what I just noticed. A lot to like the Watcher. Definitely. Watu, the character voiced by Jeffrey Wright and what if the Watcher's being another cosmic entity that just oversees, observes the multiverse. It's not supposed to interfere. But then if you slide to the left, there is a hooded figure, a skull. Death. Presumably Lady Death, who in the comics what? Thanos did all of his dirty stuff for. Then on the left in the far back, there is a bald feminine figure who looks a lot like Infinity, the sister to Eternity. And then between them, I don't I know who that is. <laughs> Eon, aka he who Whoa. waits, an offspring of eternity who's associated cool. with the concept of time. So what is this place? Well, Jane entered this through a glowing orange rift, suggesting that it's not accessible through any physical means. I'm wondering if this could be a shrine to the higher tier of cosmic beings above the god tier, perhaps an MCU version of those who sit above in shadow, the gods to the gods who oversee <laughs> the Asgardians and lend Mjolnir its power. Perhaps it was these figures who selected Jane to wield Mjolnir. Because notice it is only here where she is channeling the lightning and the thunder to power the hammer. These overseers of the multiverse may have taken mercy on Jane Foster for her cancer and seen some cosmic imbalance with Mjolnir being destroyed, selecting Jane as the all-time keeper of Thor's heart as the rightful wielder for this particular battle. And I say this particular because I don't know if the plan is to ultimately have Jane Foster be the permanent Thor going forward. That wasn't the case Doubt ultimately it. in the Mighty Thor comic run. I think ultimately by the end of this movie, Mjolnir may be destroyed once more, and like Beta Ray Bill may be wielding Stormbreaker. Whoa, that is, I did not notice any of that the first time I watched this trailer. So much flashing <laughs> by you, yeah, yeah. The Living Tribunal brought up again, and then the Watcher, I didn't really think this would have much to do with like multiverse connections, and maybe it's gonna be like another multiverse of madness situation where it's just the statues are there. We're not really gonna explore it, but we are crossing different types of gods into this one as well. And then to have Lady Death in there, a character with a lot suspect it might be also an infinity war and i don't know the way people hoped multiverse of madness could be the game changer maybe this will be the game changer in a way it could be i mean because this phase seems to keep setting up different powers that be in different god figures like eric pointed out too about maybe them building up to uh what is it the the the, the higher up the watchers in the shadows or whatever what part do you think i'm gonna remember what he just said five seconds ago? you know maybe <laughs> you read some bit of source material i, I didn't know but, two of the statues he was talking about. But either way, this being a movie about a god and the realm of other gods, I could see it being a surprise, actually very sort of earth-shattering installment True. for the overall MCU, especially if we do go above to a tier of gods where maybe they can intervene yeah. and demonstrate some of their actual power, because so much of the gods we've seen in this phase have all been about, we can't intervene! Yeah. You know, and maybe there's a reason for that. Well, when you got a god killer intervening? Now, another way to interpret this is you could connect it to the temple art of Morag back in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, that art depicted four figures, death, infinity, eternity, and entropy. Now, we don't know if these five in this chamber are the only statues in this room. There could be more out of frame. But either way, I think we are looking at the reigning hierarchy of cosmic authorities in the MCU. You have humans on one tier. Above them, you have Asgardians. They report to Zeus, Zeus in his tier, literally being larger gods, 10 feet tall, who reign over the pantheon of gods of Olympus. And then all of those gods report to this ultimate cosmic tier, including the Living Tribunal, Death, Uatu, Eon, and Infinity. Now moving on, Thor says eight years, seven months, and six days since he and Jane broke up. Now Thor Ragnarok made it sound like he and Jane's breakup was recent. So eight years, seven months after that would track with this movie keeping up with the MCU present day of 2025. Yeah, yeah. But Jane thinking hmm. three to four years is not her losing track or not caring about Thor because remember, Jane was blipped. Her face showed up on their screens <laughs> and the official screenplay confirmed that Jane Foster was one of the blipped victims. Now then again, that screenplay also 
also confirmed Wong dusted as well, despite Spider-Man No Way Home ignoring that, making Wong Sorcerer Supreme while Strange was blipped, huh. but that would hardly be the first MCU plot hole ever. So if Jane blipped for her, it would only feel like three or four years instead of eight and a half. Maybe they'll introduce some type of concept in there because there's always been concepts, uh, uh, theories about some type of radiation occurring with the blip. And maybe that's something that activates the cancer within Jane. Oh, that would be a horrible cosmic irony. I know. Radiation <laughs> causes it all. <laughs> instead of taking it away? I mean, I've always thought that maybe some of the ether le is left over in her body, so maybe some type of, you know, words, yeah, smash some, some combo of the things. Cosmic convergence boom. of MacGuffins. Yeah, there's enough stuff to get her cancer. We just gotta, we just cancer gotta give her cancer. The most <laughs> insane cancer. Then Chris Hemsworth makes, I think, my favorite vocalization he has ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and Valkyrie being here confirms that she's a mold Thor in Korg and the Guardians. Dream about that. Chari 4. I just love all these shots of Valkyrie's armor, that bold black and silver color with this Norse logo. The she's looking fine. Black and silver makes her visually at least a perfect black and silver, fit. Black and silver. Black and silver. Final battle of this movie, a desaturated one with gore, and we meet. Love the that too. The color oh. coming back from the bolt. So this is my vow. All gods will die. So we hear Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher. This interesting shot though, of a piece of rock floating toward a rift in space toward a lonely planet on the other side, maybe Earth, maybe someplace else. On that rock surface is a kind of cage structure. It actually looks like the red cape of Thor inside of it. This might be how huh. Gore navigates from place to place. Then the hilt of All Black the Necker Sword, or whatever they're gonna call this sword in this movie, lifts into Gore's hand, and then Gore reveals himself, pushing out of a snaking tangle of inky vines and lowering his hood to show his scarred face, yeah. white robes stained with blood from his mouth and his open wounds. It seems like we only ever see gore in black and white, except for his eyes. And they especially mm -hmm. boosted the contrast in this shot, giving it a noir yeah. quality, like we saw in Frank Miller and Robert Gardner yeah, in the same exactly. city. This upped contrast just really sharpens all the scars and the lines of his face, giving him a withered look, making him look both very strong, but also dead inside. Like the most jacked <laughs> corpse you've ever seen. A man who has lost everything, has nothing to lose, vengeance incarnate. Now, Gore in the comments My says, skin is eggshell white. Has no nose. But I personally am thankful they let Christian Bale keep his nose. It looks so much like Voldemort. Sure Voldemort's supposed to have a snake nose in the books. I know he does. It's just Ray Fiennes looks stupid in those movies. They tried to make it work. It did not work. And it would have been better if they just let Ray Fiennes keep his damn nose. Christian Bale has a cool, scary, angular face, and they are smart not to cover it up. <laughs> Freaking looks like Nosferatu, man. Justice for Bale's nose. I am curious to know if Christian Bale stayed in character on set the whole time and really ruin the fun for everyone on Taika Waititi's comedy set. <laughs> yep, yep. He threatened several gods in the process. People were just like messing with him. <laughs> just shouting at the sky, you and me, we're done, bitch! <laughs> oh, walking around up in the sky in the middle of the fucking scene! <laughs> I want to see Christian Bale on this movie. Yeah, what, set. So what are you as long on back. set for this movie? Yeah, I want the BTS on this. <laughs> please, please address me as Gore. <laughs> Now the vines that Gore pushes through may actually be a form of his sword. That black and white world could actually be a pocket realm that is created by All Black. Now, of course, one of Gore's victims is Falagar the Behemoth, a frame taken directly by Isad Ribik's amazing artwork in Jason Aaron's storyline. And can we use this opportunity to beg Marvel Studios, stop just giving these comics writers and artists a special thanks in the credits of the movie. Pay them as much as you're paying the directors, especially if you're lifting the frame and putting directly in the marketing of the movie, which is directly gonna lead to advanced nah. pre-sales blowing up for this movie. <laughs> Make it right. Pay your artists. On to the next clip. Nah, that's dumb. Yeah, you know, five people will buy that comic when the movie comes out, so that'll make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> you should pay the artist. So Thor pops Stormbreaker into the goat boat, which is what I'm gonna call it now, and that boat leaves a goat rainbow boat. wake goat as boat. Stormbreaker has the power of the Bifrost, the Rainbow Bridge. Jane and Valkyrie help <laughs> Thor fight off some Olympian guards, and here, and actually you can see even more clearly in that butt shot, you can see Thor has some back tattoos. It looks like he inked Loki's helmet and a square shape that I think might be Mjolnir. Oh, he cool. everything yeah. he has lost onto his back. So that might also include Odin, his mother Frigga, nah. Jane, Tony Stark, Black Widow, all the things he has lost. So why 
Volstagg. <laughs> He's gonna have <laughs> sleeves by the when end. When Thor showed up at Falagard's crime scene, Thor could have been falsely accused for killing these gods, as Olympus may think only Thor has the might to take down so many of them. Then an epic shot of Gore plunging his sword, clutching the blade into a planet or well, moon. Especially if the sword's it. giving off electricity. Able to kill Falagar. I am wondering if Gore is doing this to try to kill a celestial that might be gestating in some oh, new It's about to become illegal in 26 states. Thor tells Jane, <sighs> you never forget your first talking about her first bad guy, but his sly implication there is that they were both Keep each other's Keep your laws off loves, planetary bodies. She was his, and he will never forget her. Wait a second. Isn't the all black connected to the planet nowhere in some way? I believe that's correct. Yeah, and then it's connected to the planet Nowhere, and the Nowhere was also seen in Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm, as a mining colony. I believe it's about something to do with the symbiotic quality <laughs> I'm trying to remember this. <laughs> something to do with the symbiotic quality of the All Black trying to, like, go back to its original hosting like spot. Trying to crawl back to the depths from whence it came. Yeah, while it's, a temp while it's attached to the Necrosword with gore. Hmm. It seems to get caught doing too much. If this is a case of Thor being captured, and this is also kind of repetitive of what happened in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> Getting captured by a high-level authority being accused of something he hasn't done. <laughs> oh yeah, and then Gore's gonna break right in and murder Zeus and everybody on the spot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Thor and Valkyrie fight Gore on this broken surface that he shattered before the photography just looks incredible it looks as though thor and valkyrie are in the process of being desaturated during this fight like mm, gore could be draining the color and the life force from the whole world you can see this especially as valkyrie parries gore using one of zeus's lightning bolts like the rest of her body is desaturated but the color seems to be coming from that bolt it sounds like zeus is gonna die emits a blast from stormbreaker other than the bolts the rest of the shot has the color draining from it so why is valkyrie using zeus's bolt maybe zeus has been killed and the ranking power of olympus has temporarily passed down to her during this crisis. It just seems like as this final battle wages on, all of the color is going to be drained until we are in complete black and white. A stylistic choice that we previously have only seen in the MCU and things like WandaVision in the first Captain America film in order to invoke a deliberately nostalgic quality. But here it looks like the color changing is a direct consequence of factors within the scene. On to the last clip. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. And flip. Oh. You flip too hard, damn it! Shall we help him? And eventually, grape. <laughs> So, Russell Crowe as Zeus sounds like he's committing to a Greek accent. Good for you, Russell. And I gotta love the choice <laughs> of the flick, which, uh, yeah, is becoming a bit of an MCU inside innuendo, because remember, Ant-Man and Endgame said, flick me, Captain, as he stuck his butt out, because if you spell out flick me in a Comic Sans word bubble, in all caps and italics, uh -huh. the L and the I begin to merge together to look like a U. So, you know, the line, you flick too hard, damn it, you get the idea. And I assume Thor will not be blurred out. Yeah, when you see this Zeus you Everyone know Zeus flicks. Stay as faints, aside from Zeus, but including the guys and that bearded harpist. Meanwhile, Jane, Valkyrie, <laughs> and Korg wear hooded cloaks while they sit in the stands. I presume they're currently disguised. Not that great of disguises, but in the official's photo that revealed Bastet, they were not wearing those cloaks. Seated behind them here is a god with larger feet, wow. suggesting that many of the gods seated around them may have immense forms 10 feet tall, the way Towerit and Amit were in Moon Knight. Now, we can't really see Bastet mm -hmm. too well here. Maybe we'll see her better in the IMAX aspect ratio version of this trailer, but but you can see from her feline ears, she is turning her head a bit, taking it in. Now, Bastet and Bast are both names referring to the Egyptian cat goddess, but also Bast is the Wakandan panther deity. This movie may suggest the mythologies of Black Panther and Moon Knight and Thor are all linked, part of the same mythological system, as Moon Knight started to do by confirming the ancestral plane is just one of many MCU afterlives exactly. along with the duo in Moon Knight. Maybe hmm. Bast and Bastet are the same entity. Maybe Black Panther is considered an avatar of Bast. And since Bashenga consumed that heart-shaped herb and met Bast in 10,000 BC, See, really, Wakanda mythology was the first mythology on the planet Earth in the MCU, implying that may have influenced all the rest. See, all these people who are acting like Marvel Phase 4 hasn't been connected or it's not being clear, it's like, there's just too much happening to show it. They're just not necessarily obviously yeah. going, look at these details feeding directly, and you know it's a big playing field and each piece gives more flesh to it. I know he's theorizing right now, but it also sounds like more than likely right <laughs> to them, that at least these subtle clues in the background are connected to each other, right? Yeah, and this seems like 
again, the the realm and the characters with which to maybe address some of those things as they are dealing with the realm of gods directly. Yeah. <laughs> well, shit. All right, guys. What a hell of a video. Thank you, Eric Voss, for putting this one together and the team at New Rockstars. It's videos like this one that make me feel like a total idiot. Me too. Every video makes me feel like an idiot. No, 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 no. I need to read up on Norse mythology. Yes. I'm behind. Absolutely. Just go watch the hit film, The Northman. I just think that, that Thor is one of the... I've read The Mighty Thor um, run, but I'm, I get so daunted buy it because I'm like, oh, there's so much mythology here. It's like a whole new thing. <laughs> yeah, and it, it could be intimidating, but I'll be diving in a little bit more before this movie comes out. Guys, subscribe to New Rockstars. Thank you so much for being here. We're not coy. <laughs> <laughs> nope.